Hey y'all, Chef Irix Guy here, and this is how to smoke spare ribs, St. Louis style ribs, whatever you want to call them, in a master built electric smoker. Now today, I started out, I got the ribs, I cut them in half so that they could more conveniently fit on these racks. This is plenty big, and by the way, you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to find the smoker like I'm using, the seasonings like I'm using, and everything else. I've got it all linked there, but I uh, started out with the spare ribs, cut them in half, and then after I cut them in half, I flipped them to one side, and I rubbed yellow mustard all over the spare ribs. Now, yellow mustard functions as what's called a binder, meaning that it just better enables the uh, barbecue seasoning to stick to the meat. So it's not going to, it's not like, oh man, why are you putting all that mustard on the ribs? It's not like that at all. It's not going to distort the flavor profile of the ribs. It's just going to better enable the uh, barbecue seasoning to stick. Then I flip them over and I repeat same process on the other side, yellow mustard and uh, a generous coating of barbecue seasoning. Now, a lot of people wear gloves. I touch them with my bare hands, but if you get two spoons, you can easily flip them over and you can even rub it with a spoon. I don't know if you've ever seen that trick, but I thought I'd share it with everybody. So what we're gonna do here with the, with the electric smoker, and I'm gonna do 225. So I'm going to go 225 degrees for about three hours. Then I'm going to take the ribs out and I'm going to wrap them in aluminum foil and add all kinds of good stuff. And you're going to see that as we get to that step. And then I'm going to cook them for about two more hours. Then I'll remove them from the foil, put on my wet barbecue sauce. Wet barbecue sauce, completely optional, but I like it. It's going to be a homemade sauce. I'll show you all that here in this video. But uh, And then I'm going to cook them until until they've hit the desired degree of doneness, the perfect temperature. And I'm gonna be monitoring not only the ambient temperature inside my master built electric smoker, but also the meat temperature thanks to the meat probe. And I've, I've got the little wireless ambient and meat uh, monitoring tool that I use and it pairs up with my iPhone wirelessly, which is nice. I've got that linked within this video's description too. So we're gonna get started here. I did fill my water pan up with water and then I got a lot of fresh garlic clove and chopped up and put in the water. What that's going to do while these ribs smoke, when that water pan heats up, that's going to enhance the uh, flavor profile of the ribs because that garlic, you know, it's garlic has a, uh, a very, I like the smell of garlic, but it's got a strong smell. Imagine that in a smoker with water, those aromatics, it's going to better enhance the flavor of the ribs and also the water pan obviously helps with moisture control. You know, you don't want to dry out what you're smoking. For the wood today, I'm using hickory. I filled up my, my little smoker box. Check out my separate video where I show you how to add more chips while you smoke. But I filled it up completely, and I'm going to turn this on. And we're going to, actually, I'm going to take it up pretty high. I'm going to take it up to about 250 or so to get those smoke, get those wood chips really smoking. And then I'm going to reduce the temperature for my target temperature, ambient temperature, which will be about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and get started here, man. This stuff, oh man, I'm already, I am starving. The weather's great, but you can't rush barbecue. You know, so if you're hungry, eat you something else. Have you a small snack, healthy snack, because when the food is ready, it's gonna be good, man, and don't rush barbecue. I can't say that more than enough. Do not rush barbecue. Barbecue is not throwing a piece of meat on the grill and coming back a few minutes later and be like, who's doing? No, 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 no. Low and slow and, and achieve those phenomenal results. Okay, so now as I mentioned, you can see there's a ton of smoke coming out. So what I can do is reduce the temperature since I've got the, the wood chips are thoroughly going. I can reduce the temperature and achieve an ambient temperature of around 225 degrees. Now, this does, the Masterbuilt has an integrated uh, probe, temperature probe, but I've found that there's often a discrepancy between it and the wireless probe like I use. For that reason, I like to use my wireless probe, so the temperature I set on here may be just a few degrees different Okay, so I've changed that. I had it maxed out, which I think was 275, just to get the to get the wood chips going really good. And now I've reduced it, and we're going to wait until the temperature 
that I see on my ambient probe is around 225 before I put the uh, spare ribs in because I don't want to put them in with it above 225. 225 Fahrenheit is my optimal smoking temperature. So we're gonna we're gonna monitor this. I may play around with this, further reduce the temperature until I achieve 225 on my ambient probe reader, and then we'll put the ribs in. So this right here is my meat probe, and I've got my spare ribs, and uh, we're gonna put these in again. We're gonna smoke them for around three hours at uh, 225, right around 225 Fahrenheit. And let's see. And then we're going to put the meat probe in. You want to get it in the center of the meat. So now what we'll do is plug the meat the meat probe into the corresponding port and we'll be able to monitor ambient temperature which is the temperature inside the smoker. As I mentioned I want to keep it around 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously the temperature dropped briefly when I opened the door to insert the ribs but the wood, the wood chips as I mentioned earlier they were already going because I wanted to have a good consistent uh, constant smoke rather so now if that smoke starts to go away you know we'll use the little uh, wood chip replenisher but right now the ribs are 53 degrees uh, Fahrenheit because I just put them in the smoker is about 207 if it goes down closer to 200 just so it's between that 200 and 225 degree range if I start to get over 225 obviously I would I would recalibrate the uh, temperature so that my ambient is right around 225. But anywhere between 200 and 225, that's the, uh, that's the safe range for smoking as far as not drying it out, taking your time. And then also uh, the optimal degree of doneness, once my ribs are like I want them at the end of this process, they're gonna be about 200 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. Because you don't wanna dry them out and obviously you don't want them undercooked. So. Yeah, we're just going to monitor this, add additional wood chips as needed, and I'm going to step you through the entire process. Again, this will take, I'll have them in here with the hickory for about, probably about three hours, and then we're going to go to step two. So I'm um, probably about an hour into the smoke so far, and I'm going to uh, replenish my hickory chips. I want to show you how that works. Also, I want to show you my ambient probe. So I've got the orange thing down there on the ground, but I've also got the app, so I can monitor indoors. My ambient temp, which is currently about 215 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the meat temp, which is currently about 137 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can monitor. That's one of the cool features of this probe that I have linked within this video's description. But as far as the setting of the temp on the uh, device itself, I've got a... I've got about a uh, two or three degree discrepancy, so it's not a one for one with the master built temperature and the and the ambient probe. So I'm I'm following the ambient probe now. When I add more chips, we'll see that spike. So that's why I want it to be. I'd rather be a little bit on the cool side, compensating for additional hickory chip add versus uh, you know continuously running above 225. Again, 216, 217 degrees, perfectly fine. So I'm gonna get my chip tray. This makes it super convenient. You don't have to deal with those little uh, chip bags sitting around. You just buy the bags and 
vote them into this tray and, and again I've linked all of this equipment within this video's description so I keep saying that because people ask well, where'd you get this where'd you get that well it's easy because I've got it all linked in one place now I just... so what I do I load up my chip tray I just put it over this in case any drop they'll fall back in my wood thing and then I simply stick this in and then twist to dump the wood. See, it's upside down now, so it's dumped those additional chips into the wood where it's uh, burning the wood to make the smoke, and then periodically I'll come back and continue to replenish the uh, wood chips. Super convenient, super simple. And as I mentioned, you can see here, the temperature, because I added the wood, is spiked to 230, 230 degrees Fahrenheit. And I can see that also on the display itself, if I don't want to pull my phone out, I can see it's tracking both the ambient temperature and the meat temperature from that device. So, again, when, that, when wood chips have been in for a while, the temperature will start to reduce slightly. But I'd rather have it a little bit below 20, 225 while it's smoking and the chips have been in for a while versus adding chips and having it spike radically above 225. So for the next step of the process, I'm going to do something kind of controversial, and that is I'm going to remove the ribs from the smoker, and then I'm going to wrap them in this really nice, and you could, you could use different things, but as you can see, I chopped up apple, I chopped up pineapple, and then I got some butter. You could use margarine if you wanted to. Just kind of get it really finely chopped, and then what you'll do and the next step, and I'm going to show you in the next step, is you're going to put that all over the ribs, and then you're going to wrap them. But I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. So that's that's the uh, the next step. Again, controversial, but trust me, it's probably worth it. This is my barbecue sauce recipe. Now you can mix it up however you want to. Traditionally, a ketchup-based barbecue sauce. You know, a barbecue sauce has got kind of a reddish brownish color you're typically going to need vinegar you're going to need brown sugar you're going to need garlic powder fresh ground pepper and sea salt really don't need a lot of salt because the the barbecue itself is already salty and then uh, to you know to thicken it up ketchup and brown sugar you can add hot sauce if you want to you could add cayenne pepper my best advice is to make the sauce you know, get everything blended well, be sure it comes to a bowl to blend those flavors. Stir it thoroughly, let it simmer on the, on the stove top for a while, taste it. If it tastes too sweet, if it tastes too garlicky, adjust the, cord adjust the ingredients accordingly. And I failed to mention lemon juice, you're going to want lemon juice in there too. But that's a good, easy to make barbecue sauce. Again, barbecue sauce is secondary. And you don't even have to use barbecue sauce on the ribs if you don't want to. You can just have dry ribs, which is perfectly acceptable. I mean, they're not going to be dried out. Smoking like this, they're going to be very tender and moist. But I like sauce on my ribs. That's a popular sauce that I like for my ribs. So now we're to the controversial part. And again, with barbecue, there's so many different ways to do it. And even though I've always done it a certain way, I may change it up, make, you know, make it taste different. So what I'm going to do now is take the ribs out of the smoker. I'm going to take them into the kitchen and I'm going to thoroughly coat them in the pineapple, apple and butter that you saw me preparing earlier and then wrap them tightly in full and return them to the smoker for two hours or so as the next step. So let's go ahead and get them out of here, man. These are not done. Well, this is just part of the process here. So, with my spatula, or tongs rather, make sure I, oh man, those look good. <laughs> and I'm going to pull out my meat thermometer, because I don't want to drop that. It's beeping because I pulled it out. Well, the temperature dropped. Let me get the other one here. We're going to take these in quickly because we don't want the temp of the meat to drop 
too much. Look at that. Mm. So as you can see, I use my pineapple and my apple and butter, and I put a layer on the bottom, and then I flip the ribs over and put a layer on the top. Actually, I could have done a lot more apple and pineapple, but you get the idea. So this is the final step of today's process. As you can see, I had to pull the, the ribs out of the full and then put a, uh, you know, a decent layer of barbecue sauce on them. Now, obviously, I'm going to save some more barbecue sauce because before I serve them, I will then apply some more barbecue sauce. You don't have to do sauce at all. I mean, you can do sauceless ribs, which are great. You know, this, this method, very tender, very moist. So there's really no reason to use sauce. I like sauce, personal preference. So I'm going to let these go. I got the meat thermometer back in. Again, my optimal degree of doneness, and this may vary among barbecuers, but mine is about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Some people may say 190. Some people may say 195. Some people may say 201. But Chef Irix guy says 200. I'm not here to compete. I'm just here to have something good to eat and you know do it how you want to do it but i hope you enjoyed this video and i'm about to show you the finished product <laughs>